Well, the collective meltdown over Nunez's behavior is convenient because it allows Congress and the press to ignore what he actually says, part of which is that Americans are apparently having their information incidentally caught in an intelligence dragnet. I recently confirmed that on numerous occasions the intelligence community incidentally collected information about U.S. citizens involved in the Trump transition. If this is all about improper unmasking of, you know, incidentally collected U.S. information, he did exactly the wrong thing. Incidental collection is not surveilling a campaign or an American citizen, it's surveilling a foreign agent. There are rules about when you have incidental collection, what you do with it. I'd be curious to see if those rules will follow. Congressman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina says that instead of chasing, or maybe in addition to chasing, Russia phantoms, Congress and the press ought to be more worried about how American citizens are being spied upon and then unmasked by unscrupulous intelligence officials, probably for political reasons. Congressman Gowdy of South Carolina joins us now. Congressman, thanks for coming yes, on. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I don't really know what the purpose of all these statements from members of the committee are on both sides. I'm paying close attention. I'm totally confused. So can you just give us a quick summation of what we know for certain about spying on American citizens, including the Trump campaign? Um, well, what we know is that if there is an evidentiary basis for the president's tweet, it has not been shared with the public. So we'll get that out of the way. The, the allegation was very specific. President Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. Yes. Uh, there is not an evidentiary basis for that. Where it gets a little more complicated is there are surveillance methodologies that allow the collection of uh, hypothetically foreign to foreign communications. And to the extent that U.S. citizens are mentioned or collected in that, um, in those surveillance programs, they're masked. And uh, I think you want the information collected from a national security standpoint, but the masking is important. So with General Flynn, with the public reporting um, is that he was unmasked. All right, that's a not only a breach of protocol, that's, that, that's a violation of the law. That's the felonious dissemination of classified material. And what Chairman Nunes' point is, I want to know whether or not other people have been unmasked, even though you don't know about it publicly yet. Interesting, but, but it would be known in the intelligence community. So my understanding from watching Director Comey uh, is that intel agencies reporting to the Obama White House initiated an investigation of people around candidate Trump before his inauguration. Is that your understanding? Um, it is not, and I would be surprised if anybody could confirm that. There, there's, there's a warrant process that you have to go through with the FISA court, and it has to be approved. And again, there's a public record of all of this, Tucker, which would be in the custody of the now Trump Department of Justice. So if there were an evidentiary basis for that, it's pretty easy to lay that out. It, there's a paper trail. Why would Director Comey be willing to reveal the existence of some investigations but not comment on others? That was uh, really surprising to me. If you remember what he said, he sought special dispensation uh, from the Department of Justice to right. confirm not just a counterintelligence investigation, but one that may manifest itself with criminality. But yet, when I asked him about the leaks, he said he could not confirm that there was an investigation. I think they're both of national interest. Uh, one happens to be a felony. So um, I, I was a little surprised and a little disappointed that he can't at least tell us we are investigating the felonious dissemination of classified material. And yet he can tell us other things that may suit the agendas of others. It's, it seemed bizarre. Now, we interviewed someone on this show last week who spent 30 years at NSA, Mr. Binney, um, who said that there is no question that the NSA has personal communications from then-candidate Trump and those around him uh, on its servers. Do you think that that's true? It depends. It depends on who they're talking to. Um, if you are talking to someone for whom the intelligence agencies are authorized to collect, um, then yes, you may be captured on it. If 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 they if there is uh, a reason to collect on a non-U.S. citizen, and you happen to call that person, then you would be collected as a U.S. citizen. That's where the masking and treating it confidentially comes but, into but effect. But he was saying, and again, he worked there for all those years, that NSA collects basically all data coming in and out of the United States because they've tapped into the main data trunk. And the question is, what do they do with it? But they have it. Is that your understanding? Is that true? Um, I think that's that's a little broader than what my understanding is. Uh, you, you would have to get a warrant. If you're talking about U.S. citizen, you have to get a warrant application FISA court. If you are talking foreign to foreign, it's a separate analysis. If you're talking U.S. to foreign, um, it's a still a separate analysis and one that would require going to the FISA court. So my last question, you sit on the committee
entity that oversees our intelligence agencies, are you satisfied that if you request a specific accounting of something that you're going to get it, you're going to get a straightforward answer and get the entire answer? Um, I don't know that I would, Tucker, and I'm not dodging your question. There's something called the Gang of Eight. Uh, they are entitled right. to information that even HIPC members are not. Members of the committee would receive that information. You think? Um, Speaker of the House, the minority leader, right. ranking member, and the chairman of HIPC are our four in the Gang of Eight. If you're just a HIPC member like I am. I get it, but you think not. they can get whatever they want and they can get the full story and the intel agencies will give it to them and feel the obligation to give it to them? They should, and I only caveat it by saying should because when one source has the information and the other's requesting it, you never know what you're not Well, you never do know should. that, and that's the concern for ordinary voters like me. Yes, sir. Congressman, thanks for coming on. I yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you.